So I got it. Final Mouse's Ultralight X or ULX Tiger Edition. That is the large edition of the mouse for those of you who didn't know. And it's actually pretty fucking good. I'm not gonna lie. Now I am in no way sponsored or endorsed by Final Mouse. And I actually kind of strongly dislike them as a company. So this is not a review from some Final Mouse fanboy hype beast that has the past 15 releases. I'm just a random guy with good aim that wanted a lighter mouse to fit my larger hand. I mean, after all, I did make a meme style video about how bad Final Mouse's shipping is. So before we start the review, I just wanted to say I have a normal copy of the mouse just like the rest of us NPCs, and I do not have a reviewer copy of the mouse. I'm pretty sure the order date was December 18th with the expected ship outs to start before the end of uh, February. Yeah, that didn't happen. So I'm not really sure what happened during production or what, but at least for me, I had mine ship out around March 8th, I believe, and I physically got the mouse March 11th. So I've got to test the mouse for two weeks because I didn't want to test the mouse for only like a day and be like, yeah, good, yeah, bad. I wanted thorough testing. I know, how dare me, want a, a fair, honest, and accurate review. How dare me, man. So straight out the box, I was actually pretty confused because there's almost literally nothing besides the mouse, the cord, the dongle, and the grip tape. Usually mice come with some sort of stickers or something. And actually, Final Mouse has put some plastic card thingy with their logo on it in the past, but I guess they're done with that. Which, I honestly do not care in the slightest, but some people might. My copy has zero manufacturing problems from what I can tell, and has pretty much perfect centering on all the buttons including the scroll wheel, and there wasn't any warping on the shell or gaping holes from the shell not touching the bottom or side of the mouse. There's no concerning rattle, and this batch does come with the updated material on the bottom where the battery sits. I know the first batch didn't have any material right there to stop all the dirt and dust and hairs from getting inside it. I also think the stock feet are pretty fucking insane, but to be fair, it is Final Mouse and they usually are pretty good with that. And combined with the weight, it feels pretty much effortless to move this bitch. I went to Walmart to do a weight test because I don't just have a gram scale laying around, like I assume most of you don't. So yeah, the mouse is probably in that 39, 40 gram range instead of the 37 that they advertise. And since I broke, fractured my pinky a couple years ago, holding a mouse for an extended period of time really puts a strain on my knuckle to the point of extreme pain. Now, the previous mouse I was using was the Logitech G502X Wireless, and this shit is a brick. It weighs about 89 grams, and I could go about two hours of continuous use before my hand and knuckle started to hurt. The ULX Tiger at a nearly three times lighter weight, I played for 11 hours continuously before my hand or knuckle even started to bother me. The clicks on the mouse are super light, actually kind of too light at times. Like for instance, left mouse click to shoot is fine, but say you're playing tracer and you're still using right mouse click to blink well you might actually click it down without actually clicking it down i also personally think that the little grooves creases all over the mouse are kind of unnecessary you will at times think there is something underneath your finger when clicking depending on where and how you're clicking actually one of the few downsides of the mouse and depending on how you hold or grip your mouse the side buttons can be pretty hard to press. They click pretty easy, but for me, they're just too far up. But I mean, that's not a deal breaker for me, so. I know some people have complained about the scroll wheel not having the best notches, but I personally thought they were fine. Easy to distinguish between the levels and spammable, but maybe that's the reason people don't like it that much, because they're using each individual level for some different mechanic in Fortnite. But! There is something weird about the scroll wheel that I can't seem to figure out. I cannot recreate it to save my life. For some reason, I don't know how the fuck it happens, but the scroll wheel activates itself. I've lightly banged my $200 mouse on my desk trying to activate it. I've tried shaking the mouse side to side, up and down, no avail. I've tried spamming the left and right mouse button in weird ways to try to recreate it, but I just can't. Now, I don't necessarily need my scroll wheel for any game I play, but for someone who uses the scroll wheel religiously, man, Maybe. I could definitely see that being a deal breaker, but like I said, I cannot recreate it and it kind of just does it on its own. So maybe it's just my unit plagued with this issue, but who knows, I'm not really bothered by it, or at least yet. 
Now the coating on the mouse, I think is fucking terrible. My hands have never sweated so much using a fucking mouse. Now, of course, this is coming from somebody who has really clammy, sweaty hands, but I'm telling y'all, there's something wrong with this coating. It's so fucking bad. But I mean, I just threw on the grip tapes and it kind of fixed my issue, which leads me into another issue with the mouse, the honeycomb. I'm not a honeycomb hater or enthusiast, but depending on how you hold your mouse, the side of your finger may or may not get smushed into one of the holes on the side of the mouse to the point where it's uncomfortable and may even become wrong, which of course I fixed with the grip tape. But I didn't want to put grip tape on this side of the mouse because the sticky residue always touches my fucking finger, man. It's honestly pretty distracting, but I mean, I guess it is what it is. The dongle lighting up to tell you the charge is pretty good. But when you do have to charge it to connect the cord into the mouse to charge, it feels like the bitch is about to snap off into the mouse. Every single time I plug it in, I feel like I'm about to break my fucking mouse. I, I actually, I, I fucking hate it so much. If you have one, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. And depending on your settings and how much you play, you will have to charge that bitch a lot. And these settings I'm referring to are inside Final Mouse's control panel. I mean, it, it only took them years to finally let people change their DPI with the software, but they actually do it in the best way possible to where you don't have to download some bullshit application. You just load it up on their website. And in my opinion, it looks clean as fuck. So now you can change your DPI from five different levels which I guess that's a start from the previous three. 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and 6400 DPI. The mouse was marketed to have a polling rate of 8,000, but that's under testing for whatever fucking reason. So at the moment, you only have 500, 1000, 2000, and 4000, which I've been using 4000. They let you decide if you want to have a liftoff distance of one millimeter or two millimeters, which I use to just in case. I have Motion Sneak on because it's supposedly supposed to help your mouse compute data or some shit. And to be fair, I couldn't tell you if there was a difference or not. You can select if you want the dongle display to be off to indicate battery level or to be solid white, which I don't know why you would select white unless it goes with your setup or some shit. They even have a firmware tab that lets you see when a new update is out, unlike most where you have to actually physically click to check for an update and then it buffers for a second or whatever. And of course the application shows you the exact level of the battery, which in my time testing, it can fluctuate up or down depending about 1%, which is not really a big deal. And it tells you how well your wireless connection is. Now, of course, everyone's connection will vary, but my connection is excellent all the way for an arm's length. And then it's about good. So excellent is probably about the length of your arm to the dongle because I'm long boy at 6.3. Now at 800 DPI with 4,000 polling rate, with motion sync on and a two millimeter liftoff distance from 2 p.m all the way to about one o'clock in the morning so about 11 hours of use continuous use i can't remember if my battery level from 100 percent went all the way down to 39 37 or 33 it was it was one of those i can't remember it was a couple days ago well actually it was almost two weeks ago but fuck it so i guess on their website where they say industry leading battery life with intermittent use, gamers can expect to reach an average of two months without needing to charge their ULX. Continuous use hours vary based on polling rate. I guess kind of saved their ass because that shit is not lasting two months, man. I don't know who the fuck was smoking some crack over there, but it is not lasting two months, brother, man. And honestly, if these are the only issues with the mouse, I'd say it's more of a me thing, if anything. But regardless, I'm still pretty happy and will probably be buying another one just in case something happens to this one and to have a backup. Overall, I thought this review was pretty fair and honest and I didn't want to rush it out. And this was over the course of two weeks. So if anything super bad happens, or becomes an issue where the mouse is actually unusable, I'll make an update bid. I will not tell you if you should or should not buy this mouse. You should be able to make an educated decision yourself. But if you have the money and you want this mouse, you probably will get what you expected. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. And I will see you in the next one. Later.